Hello, I'm Dave Martin and welcome to lesson number five in Creo Parametric for Absolute Beginners. And this lecture covers file management. So I've launched Creo Parametric. I'm going to close the Resource Center. In lesson number one, we saw how to open up new files. I'll click the Open button and let's go to C, Creo Absolute Beginners. And in lesson number one, I showed you how you could use the Select Working Directory command. You can also right click on a folder as you're browsing and choose Set Working Directory. And I'll double click on the folder, find the model that I'm interested in, double click on it in order to open it. An alternate method of opening a file is clicking on it and then holding down the right mouse button so you get a pop-up menu. Again, it's not tapping the right mouse button, it is holding down the right mouse button. And from the menu, you can choose Open. Now, let's go back to the original window. Let's say that I make a change in my model. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to create a datum plane and I'm going to use my selection filter to make sure that I can only select surfaces. I'm going to create a datum plane through this surface over here and click OK. I've just done that just to create one new additional feature, which is called ADTM1. Now that I've made a change, if I want to save this change, I can use the Save icon or the Control s keyboard shortcut. So I'll click that and it tells me that the model has been saved. And again, as mentioned in lesson number one, when you save an object, it creates a new iteration of that object. It doesn't overwrite the previous one. So let's say I have this assembly over here and I want to use it as the basis for creating a new assembly. You can use the save as command for doing that. For example, if I go to file, and then save as, there are a couple different choices in here that I can use. First off, there is save a backup. And with this, I can take all the objects from this assembly and dump them out to a folder. And from the dialog box, you can create a new folder. I'll call this backup and click OK. And so now I'm in the backup folder. And when you choose to back it up, you're not changing the file name. You're just saving it out, all the files in this assembly to a particular folder. And one thing I want to mention, when you do that backup, your original assembly from the original location is still the open and active model. Creating a backup does not open up the backup. I'm going to go to the folder browser and let's choose working directory. Now here you can see the backup folder. If I double click on it, here we can see the copied objects stored in this particular location. And from the right mouse button, you have the ability to create new folders as well inside of here and cut, copy and paste. By the way, from the which command is it? From the tools drop down menu, that's right. Uh, you have the ability to see all versions. And since I just performed this backup, everything is at a dot one. But if I go up a folder level, you'll notice that I have the dot one and dot two iterations of the assembly because this was how it was first created, and then this is when I performed the save. And if you go to details, you can see when those particular objects were created or saved. All right, let's close the embedded browser. So I showed you how to do file, save as, and then backup. Let's say that I want to store this under a new file name. So let's go to file, save as, and this time I'm going to use save a copy. And Let's change the folder that we're going to use. And again, I can right mouse click and choose new folder and I'm going to call this copy. 
And in the copy folder, now we can type in a new name over here. I'm going to call it the shaft and then click OK. And when you create this copy, you have the ability to either reuse the original components or create copies of them. So for example, this particular part, if I want to, I could save a copy. And by default, it's going to append an underscore on the end of the file name. But I can call this shaft main and hit enter. And it'll end up copying that particular part. You can also use some mapping in order to use a template for renaming or adding prefixes or adding suffixes to the, com uh, the components that you copy instead of reusing. And you have the ability to save the copy and that'll just create it in that folder that I selected. Or you can choose save copy and open. So now it's open up on my computer and here you can see shaft.asm and here is shaft main for that component that I copied as well. And that way I could make changes to this copied version and not affect the original. And another thing that I want to mention, let me go to my working directory and go to the copy folder. What you'll notice is when I did the copy, it only copied the parts that I specified. Any of the ones that I said to reuse are still located in their original folder and they haven't been renamed. So just be aware of that when you are managing the different files. Okay, so now I am going to go back to my main window. Here's the model tree. If I don't want this model open on the computer screen anymore, I can click the close button. I can do that for all the windows that I no longer want to see. But one thing to be aware of is that when you close a window, those objects are still in your computer's RAM. They're still in your computer's memory. For example, if I go to the open button, there is in session available from common folders. And this will show me all the different models that are still sitting in my computer's memory. That way, if you accidentally close something without saving it, you can go back and say, oh, wait, let me open that up again. And now I've got my shaft open, even though I closed the window. This retrieves it directly from my computer's RAM. If you click the close button and then want to get rid of it out of your computer's RAM, for example, again, I go to in session, all these objects are still sitting in my computer's memory. If I choose erase not displayed, those will take those objects out of my computer's RAM. And this is something that you'll definitely want to do. Uh, for example, if you have some really huge assemblies open and you've closed them and you notice that your computer's a little slow, hey, be sure to erase not displayed so that you'll no longer have those objects cluttering up your computer's RAM and making your computer slower. All right, let me go back to my working directory. And in the working directory here, you see that we have a dot one iteration of the assembly and a dot two iteration of this particular assembly. I'm going to double click on the assembly in order to open it. If I want to get rid of those old iterations, we can go to file and then manage file and then delete old versions. Now be aware that there's a command that says delete all versions. This command does exactly what it says it does. If you choose to delete all versions, this model will be gone from your computer. This is pretty much a one-way trip. There's probably never any real reason why you should be using file delete all versions. Uh, but again, if I choose file delete old versions, it says, hey, do I want to delete old versions of this 01-51200 assembly? I'll click yes. And now when I go to my working directory, previously I had a dot one iteration. It is no longer there. Now I only have the dot two iteration. All right, last step for file management, creating new files. If I want to create a new object, 
you can use the file new command. New is also available in the quick access toolbar. And just like in Microsoft Word and other Microsoft programs, you can use the common keyboard shortcut of Control N. And when I do that, I get the new dialog box and there are a number of different objects that you can create. The most common objects that people create are parts, assemblies, and drawings. When I go to create a part, there are different subtypes. Most of the time you'll probably end up creating solid parts, but you can also create sheet metal parts as well. Bulk items represent objects that you typically don't model with geometry. For example, things like paint or any kind of lubricants that you want to appear in the model tree in your bill of materials, but you're not physically going to model. So I'm going to leave the subtype of solid, and then you can type in the name for your vehicle, or excuse me, for your model. In this case, I'm just going to call it vehicle. And then you can type in a common name. And the reason that they have a name and a common name is that at a lot of places, you're going to have a standard part numbering system. For example, I might have a system where you have a digit and then a dash and then a bunch more digits and then maybe uh, more digits after that. I don't know, some kind of part numbering system that you can use. And it's not intuitively obvious what this string of numbers means and so that way you could use a common name and I like to use all capitals and I could call it my vehicle let's spell correctly top level and let's call this trade study one you know whatever common words would help someone looking at this model to understand what this does and Actually, this would be more appropriate for an assembly, so I'll change the radio button to assembly. And here we have a bunch of different subtypes, but you're probably going to use the design subtype almost all the time if you're doing regular uh, modeling in Creo Parametric. There's an option here to use a default template. Most likely you or your companies will have default templates that you have customized, or you could use the PTC default templates. Let me uncheck this option to show you what you can get. If I click OK, here we have the inch pounds ASM design. This is the default template that comes from PTC. Here we have another default template that I have customized. Unfortunately, I created this in an a newer version of Creo Parametric. Creo Parametric does not have backwards compatibility. For example, if I create something in Creo Parametric 5.0, it can't be read, or excuse me, opened in Creo Parametric 3.0. There are a few exceptions around there. I've used something called GCRI, but for the most part, there's not backwards compatibility. And so I'm going to use my browse button to navigate to templates on my computer. And wherever PTC, your PTC programs are installed on your computer, you're going to have a bunch of default templates available to you. So for example, I'm going into the common files folder in my Creo 3.0 load point. There's a templates folder. PTC provides a number of default templates to you. In this case, I'm going to use the metric version, the millimeter newton seconds design assembly template. And I'll click open. And then there are a couple parameters in here that you could fill out when you're creating the object, but you can always fill those out later on. And I'll click OK. And now I have my new assembly created. If I want to create an individual part, well, we'll use the new button again. I'll leave part, solid, and again, maybe you're using some kind of standard numbering scheme. And then you'll use real words in the name to describe what the object is. And we have this use default template. Same thing applies. You could use one of PTC's templates. So for example, I'm going to go to 
my load point again. Underneath there, common files templates. There we could use our millimeter newton seconds part solid template. And click OK. And now I have a new part started. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.